Hello and welcome back to Bricking It and today we're going to look at what's hidden inside my books of wizarding lore. Yes, yeah, not quite complete spines, but after 30 days I could get an email from the Lego group telling me that my standard order bricks are actually on their way. So maybe this will get complete. Be that as it may, let's have a look inside. So to start with, we have one huge mock display and five smaller volumes. One is still a very much a work in progress. I wonder if you can guess just by those little glimpses what that's going to be. But we'll put that away. Some of these are actually individual mocks. This one I'm going to be covering a video all of its very own. So that leaves us with these small small this one's enormous these three volumes as well as our main display so here we are let's have a closer look so this is my ministry of magic or part of it there's still some other bits to add on but this is how it stores away as you can see even in this half complete state it's a fairly nice way to display all of my ministry style minifigs now the front row you're probably going to recognize almost all of these so for this guy they are actual production pieces but we can have a look at some of the mocks before we go on so this is just a random pure-blooded ministry supporting wrong and Look at that face, obviously a wrong one. I think that was the uh, mayor of Lake Town's face. Uh, vampire torso, maybe. Some wizarding legs and a pointy hat. Here we have another wizard, possibly visiting the Department for International Magical Cooperation. I just saw this torso and these legs and fell in love. I thought it's so good. Not his original head. At least I don't think it is. Definitely not his original hair. A nice grumpy face on the back there. I thought this was just like a really nice wizard to be knocking about in the atrium. So these three chaps in the bowler hats are part of my Department of Magical Law and Enforcement. You can see they've all got badges. They've all got bowler hats and they've all got moustaches because they're the cops and even when they're not in uniform they've got a uniform. So let's have a look at them individually. This one borrows a body from um, the Lone Ranger theme. His face is a uh, Hoth officer I believe. Fairly common one to come across. And then a nice brown doiby on top of his head. Dr. Jones gave the torso to this minifig. Legs from well, any number of random city characters. Might go with plain to take those front pockets off. They're not very uh, suit, are they? Jacob Poaski's face and another brown bowler on top. And finally, Madam Hooch provided the torso for this one. Glorious moustache. This time a grey bowler hat, some plain black legs. So those are my magical law enforcement. Not auras. The auras are a lot more, uh, not cooler than those guys. Just standard magical law enforcement. Next up, another pure blood witch. She's got a grumpy face and posh hair. She must be a baddie. There we go. I do like her little pendant. Gives me time turner vibes. and makes me wonder if that's why she came by today. To borrow a time turner. The freckles of the Hermione face make her look slightly more innocent than she is. But she is one of my pure blood ministry supporters. As is this fella. 
and he's got a head from one of the Quidditch players, Flint, I think it was, possibly not. Uh, Grindelwald's hair, the penguin's torso, and he just screams, baddie. Look at that. Accumulation of wrong uns. Nice. Next up at the back here, we have one of my unmentionables. Is that right? Unmentionables? <laughs> Does that <sound> right? <laughs> From the Department of Mysteries. It's got one of the Pirates of the Caribbean zombie heads on. I think that's an Imperial officer or First Order officer's torso. That gives a nice uh, spooky vibe. Another one uses the, not the Mandalorian, the Mandarin's body from uh, Marvel. His face is actually a spare centaur head I had. Hence why he's wearing this mask to disguise his identity a little bit. I believe that's from the CMF Ranger figure. I'm not entirely sure. Just saw a very cool green hood. I thought I must have it. So those are my unmentionables. Is that right? It doesn't seem right. Now this uh, body is from Jurassic Park. From Claire. Um, random head and hair. Just put together, added on. Now, the original reason I ordered this figure was to use this side of the torso as um, Professor Lockhart's uh, dueling outfit. Didn't really show with those. But that was going to be the front because it's got those seam lines there and it was very tailored on him. So it really did come in at his waist and go out to his hips. And I thought that would work, but it did just look like I had a torso on backwards. It really didn't work with the bits and pieces. Uh, so I'm glad I didn't remove the printing from this side. So she's just random witch at the ministry. And then another visiting wizard to the Department of International Magical Cooperation. I always think of this as Ali Bashir, who's uh, annoyed that his uh, imports of magic carpets are not uh, being allowed anymore, as is mentioned in the book. I think he's got, yes, General Zod's face. That's when he gets really annoyed, having to deal with Percy instead of the minister. Oh, focus. There we go, and that's a Prince of Persia torso. Uh, standard blue skirt. And the face of Zod. So there we go, and then these characters here, all from, uh, what's it for Fudge? Who's from the CMF? No, Hagrid's up. Uh, all from the Ministry set. Oh, goodness gracious. Um, Kingsley Shackle Bolt, and then a couple of visiting uh, witches from America. And that's um, uh, Serafina Pickery and uh, Tina Goldstein. And this is my backdrop for displaying all my ministry figures. Now you may notice up in the window here, we have Dolores Umbridge smirking to herself in her own private office. We've got a pair of um, fireplaces connected to the flu network, one activating and one just initializing. Nice bit of... Uh, Look at that poor sticker application. It's not straight at all, is it? A little bit of decoration above our fireplaces. Now, this is quite nice. It's quite good, but it needs more. So we shall add more. So first thing we'll be adding is a couple more offices. These are stored in a moment. As you can see, my offices aren't standard size to um, what was in the original set. They've actually been reduced in height I think a plate layer. There used to be um, gold pins in the bottom of these. Drastically reduced in size. So that they are only 8 wide and 10 tall. And they will plug two together onto one of these moments books. And they will sit 
on top of these offices. Inside, I've got another one of my cops, moustache, but he's indoors, so he's just got his hair out. And then random wizarding chap. I think he's got the penguin's head. James Potter's scarf and Loki's body is a right old mishmash. An unsuccessful mock, so he gets stuffed in a window. So we've still got quite a large chunk of space to fill up. Let's have a look at how we're going to do that. So a chunk of space is going to be filled with this unit here. And it's all one piece and it's going to take up the whole space. And here we have our entrances to the ministry. So let's take that bit out. That needs to live up here. The front of this can come off. As can the back, as apparently can the phone box. So here we have a toilet entrance, got a couple of mirrors on the end. May well add sinks in there, but they're just going to clash with the doors. Got to finish the top of this. Oh, that's a shoddy workmanship. Uh, so we've got a couple of stalls inside, no toilets, because I'm lazy and the doors don't open anyway. A nice arched entranceway and then next to that is our visitors entrance phone box i've adjusted this from its initial uh, look again so these um one bars on the side were um sticking out i just wanted to recess them in so we had completely smooth sides and it was contained on a four by four so i managed to do that by dint of some brackets and plates, which is not particularly uh, pretty on the inside. Uh, but now I know it works, I can replace these with more appropriately colored pieces, or at least all the same color. So it's not quite uh, such a mishmash. Don't like this, that needs to be replaced as well with a red one. Why they used a, uh, a gray brick, I don't know. Maybe they don't do a red one. That'll probably be why. And because it's been reduced in size, I had to remove the extra signs on the side and the one on the back just clashed with closing the book. So that one's gone too. But this all fits and clips into these clips here. Let's see if I can do this. There we go. And just by dint of the curve of its spine rests on top of the corridor there, just rests perfectly, keeping our entrances flat. Let's have a bit of an adjustment. Weird camera thing going on. All well, those toilet stalls look enormous, but they really aren't. And we can have our workers queued up, ready to enter the ministry, ready to take their places in the fireplaces down below, but that's at extra height, filling up the space. You can just about see it all in the shot there. Good stuff. We've still got some extra bits though. Let's add those on. So as you can see at the front here, we've got some blank studs. And that's so that we can add the final feature of our atrium, our fountain, which just sits there adding a little bit of extra interest and also let's put our ministry banner hanging from there there we go and that's the complete mock we can populate it with the minifigures to make it look a lot nicer and a lot more lived in without them all just standing in a line and this will be my display of most of my ministry during the films in which it features so if you've enjoyed this video, please leave us a like. And if you'd like to see more Ministry of Magic builds, then please subscribe to Brickinet. Bye-bye.